Yo, 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 what's going on, people? We're back right now, yeah. Tipsy Talk, Wavy Wednesday, Champagne, the conversation, banter before bed. Again, don't feel like it's a radio on all social media platforms. Your host, Drunkle J. And we've got a special guest today. Jeez! Jeez. Tia Marie Ashanti. Yes. Hey, yo, 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 what's going on, miss? <laughs> what's poppin', everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Going to be chatting a lot, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and before we all start, I always do this check-in because, again, we came from a pandemic. I just want to know mentally, how are mm. you today, Miss, in general? Yeah, so I'm good. You know, just recovering from a hangover. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, still trying to stay strong, still looking the part. So, <laughs> yeah. And so you had, you had a hangover. Just What's your drink of choice, anyway? Um, I'm a cocktail girl. I love porn star martini. Mm. Um, that's my fave. I can have about three. <laughs> Never regret it. <laughs> um, tequila shots just to get it going. <laughs> so when you go last night then? So last night I went to the Ivy Asia and um, it was in central London. Mm. And just went with a few girls. Because um, this is a bit of a mad topic. But on Monday, mm. um, I found out that the guy I was talking to was actually cheating on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we started really like that, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Literally, so... Wait, how? How did I find out? Yeah. So, um, oh, I don't know, like, he must have called me in the morning and was like, oh, Tia, like, I miss you, da 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 And I don't know, like, after the call, I just prayed and I said, God, like, if you're keeping me blind, like, just show me anything that's not meant to be. Like, if this person's not meant to be, show me today, because I ain't got time. Like, mm. I got money to make. <laughs> <laughs> And obviously, like, I found a few messages, a few things. On well, his phone? Uh, no, no. The thing is, is that he's not even in this country. Yeah, this is, what like, international... Uh, Paris. Long distance? Literally, it was mad. Hey. I thought I could do it. Like, anyway, obviously, I found out... Duh, 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 duh. And then I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to live my life. Mm. And I'm going to start off with having a bit of a drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it, basically. And now I just feel so much better. Honestly. So you still with him or? No. Oh, hell yeah. no. Like, he lost the privilege. Like, okay. it is done. Like, it's fully done. So, yeah. He wasn't a black guy, was he? Uh, No, he was light-skinned, but... Oh, okay, yeah, because black men don't cheat, so... Oh, oh well, that's a lie, but <laughs> we couldn't get into that because... Black boys cheat, not black men. Oh, oh, that's a different thing as well. <laughs> like, you're right about that, but obviously, like, I dated so many, like, black guys in the past. I was like, oh, let me switch it up. Da -da -da -da. Let me try light skin. And obviously, he thought he was too prestige. Like, we was clashing as well. Like, mm. I thought I was prestige. He thought, it, like, it's just not going to work. Like, we're just going to end up being prestige to each other. So, mm. you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, I always look at it as a learning curve. And I just think that experience, I can use it for my music, how I'm feeling. So, yeah. mm. <laughs> So, again, thanks for coming because I know you're very busy. So I appreciate this. Mm. But we want a little backstory. Mm. So, whereabouts in London are you from there, man? So, I am from Cruise Hill. So, that's basically Enfield. Okay. Um, but I'm originally brought up in Tottenham. Okay. Um, so I moved around, like, Enfield, but basically just all North London. Like, I've just lived there all my life. And, um, like, music has always been, like, a part of me because I don't know if you may know, but um, my dad is Chris J, who was the creator of Heat FM. Serious? Yeah. And I know when he sees this, he's going to get gassed. <laughs> yeah, from, that's yeah. legendary, you Literally, know. Literally, everyone says that he's a legend. Yeah, 100%. Like, pioneer. Literally. So I always had an influence, even though in the beginning, like, I didn't know my dad for a few years. I'm like, so I met my dad properly until I was, like, 14. I'll say properly. So it was just crazy how we were so alike and that. Not to cut you, but were you only yeah. child or...? No, no, no. I've got um, a brother. I've got loads of siblings. Oh, okay. Enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to know if he's <laughs> like... Because I just want to know, because you didn't know your father, who was your father figure that you looked up oh, to. Oh, I knew him, but it was more so like, it was a distance. And then obviously, like, my parents weren't together. Mm. And then when I was 14, I was like, cool, now I'm old enough to sort of talk to my dad and find out more. And it was just crazy how we just both love music. And then when I found out more about who he is and how many people know him mm. but then i'm kind of on this journey on my own i'm like you know what i don't need your help like <laughs> i know you can help me in this industry but i want to do it on my own do you know what i mean so yeah <laughs> that sounds a bit like cool do you know who she is 
Uh, the American... yes. yes, 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 yes. And her yes. father is Benzino. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know Benzino, that. Yeah, I thought watch. she was just famous from um, Trippy Red. No, no, so, no. Yeah. Her father's Benzino, but she doesn't like to use that entitlement. So yeah, she because does it it's, it's like, you know what? I don't want people just to see me as, you know, oh, you're this person's daughter and that's it. And that's how you got where you are. That's. I want to be more independent. I want people to see mm. what I want to do, not someone coaching me, if that makes sense. So yeah. <laughs> so when did you fall in love with music then? Do you remember the first song? So I, I was doing like, um, this is a fun fact that mm. not a lot of people know, but I was actually doing opera. Opera? Yeah, from the age of like five to when I was 16. Um, I done grades, I done um, uh, clarinet, I done piano. Mm -hmm. Like I was well, doing- you play piano on that? Yeah, yeah, like I was doing proper opera, like Mariah Carey high note kind of thing. Like, Serious? That's why some of my music, if you listen closely, you can hear some like high notes. I try to put it in a little bit because I don't want to scare people. <laughs> with, like, <laughs> yeah, you like, the glass wanna, that. Literally, like I don't want to scare people like- So how do you get into that then? So um, obviously my mum knew that I loved to sing mm. and she was just like, you need to learn how to do the breathing exercises, mm. how to pronounce things. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. when you're listening to music, especially, especially like UK girls, when we sing, mm. we sound like we're American. Do you know what I mean? Big like facts. sometimes when we're singing, so it's about, you know, how you're articulating, like your, the way you're putting your mouth, like A, E, I, O. Like it's a bit more, it's a bit more <laughs> like. Techie. And um, also doing the opera, you sort of learn about you know, the piano notes and the breakdown of music. So yeah, that's why. I so you're like, a, like Alicia Keys then? Basically, <laughs> do that. But I think it's like, I'm still sort of getting to know myself. So I don't want to show people mm. everything that I can do now. And I think it's just about as well that in this generation, like a lot of people, we care about what others think. And Big it's facts. like, if we're different, we're like, oh, I'm not too sure. Da, 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 da. But that might work. Mm. So. I'm still sort of gaining the confidence to eventually get like that. So in school, <laughs> did you like do any school plays in that when you were singing? Yeah, I was the main. Every single time. Every that's play, yeah? Period, like, uh, you sure about that, yeah? Yeah, I was the main singer. Like everyone knew like if the teacher was like, um, you know, who's going to sing this thing? Like people wouldn't even think twice because they just know number one, T is going to cuss me if I'd say that <laughs> I want to do it. And number two, she just does it every time. But I had a teacher called Miss um, Brazier in primary school and she was an opera singer okay um, so and she was like very well like well spoken she was like 50 or so but she was so posh and i remember like she used to say like sub straight and you don't say hi like to someone you say good day or something like that it was <laughs> mad but she taught me a lot about singing and mm. opera and confidence um so yeah i was always even as a child i was always the big mouth the person that spoke the most, like the mm. one that wanted to always perform and, and yeah, that, that, that was it. <laughs> so growing up, who's your idol in terms of music? Like who did you look up to? So I would say that, I would say Mariah Carey. Good. Um, okay. Also, I'm not too sure if you know, but Tina Marie. Of course. That's, yeah, that's more like 70s, 80s. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, Portuguese Love, like that's yeah. my favorite song. Um, yeah, I would say that, I used to listen to a lot of like musicals as well, but that's more like opera. So mm. it's more so like uh, West Side Story. Yeah, or, Grease. Yeah, Who's Grease or the uh, Magic Flute. Like, okay. it's crazy. Like, it goes intense. Like, sometimes my music genre can go back to like 1930. Like, mm. it just depends. That's honestly. good though, man. Yeah. Who's that <laughs> opera guy that died? The fat one, the famous one. Uh, Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't remember his name, but he I, knows about I, innit? Yeah, I know yeah, you're yeah, yeah, I've got his name, yeah, man. Legend. Yeah, yeah. So listen, what was it like growing up in Tottenham, then, man? So, growing up in Tottenham, it was like I was so young. Like I can't even remember. All I remember is that as soon as the street lights go out, you need better get back in your house. <laughs> like that's it. Is that like peak, yeah? literally, like I remember not so much. Like I just remember that. I felt like I was in more of a community. Mm. Like everyone knew each other. Like there was that auntie down the road that made the food and mm. she brought it around to everyone's house. Mm. Or if my mom couldn't look after us, like we're going to the next neighbor's yard. Like mm. it was more like a community. So then now, like when I, when I look back, when I go through Tottenham, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is where I grew up. But Does it changed a lot then? Yeah, cause where I live is like, more like Enfield, more like Cruise Hill. Okay, so okay, it's like okay, okay. My mom, she, 
she was a single mom, you know, with two kids in uni, like she taught me so much about just keeping positive and motivation, like, and that you can achieve mm. like goals because where we was living was in Tottenham. Like it wasn't the best area, but mm. now where we live, like if she didn't have that mindset, mm. I don't know, like it's only God, like I swear. So that's what also keeps me humble. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> Be real, Miss Yeah. Mm. London Rights in Tottenham, where was you at? Wait, what do you mean? The riots, what happened in Tottenham, where was oh, you at? Oh, the riots. Oh, um, 2012, right? Something like that. Um, 2012, I think I was moved out by then. I oh, think okay. I just got to um, Turkey Street. Okay, yeah. okay. But I did see a few people on TV. Like, <laughs> some TV and, so, and I was just like... <laughs> Yes. Auntie, I see. I, I'm going to keep myself to myself. Like, as no long face, as you, no case. Literally, like, as long as you bring me some shoes from JD, I'm all good. Like, a few socks here and there. Like, mm. I remember that. I remember thinking. BBM days. Literally. I remember just thinking, like, I'm so scared. Like, mm. what should I do? Is everything going to be free? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, BBM. I remember BBM. Um, you know, I was, I was a bit active on there. But not really so much. Like, I wasn't a big social media fan at the beginning. Like, okay. I was kind of like, I'm not too sure. Like, my mouth is so big. I have opinions. And sometimes people are just like, what the hell? Like, I was always sort of an outcast. Like, because I just knew that I was more in control of my mind and just so confident. And sometimes people don't want to yap, 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 yap. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I know I can't be like that. So, so what country is yeah. your family from then? Uh, so my dad is English and Irish and my mum is mixed. So her dad is from Sierra Leone. Okay. And then her mum is part Jamaican and Italian. Oh yeah, what are you? Italian, yeah. <laughs> Do you speak all them languages? Uh, no. <laughs> I know a bit of Italian, I'm not going to lie. Um, very basic, like, you say like, ciao, come sto bene, like, simple stuff. Um... Obviously, the Jamaican culture, like, from what you've seen and what we're going to talk about, like, <laughs> I, I clearly have that. I got to unlock, like, I got all the dance moves and well, everything. One and like, yeah, Literally, okay. do you understand? <laughs> so, um, you know, I was going to, from when I was, I think, like, 12, I was going to these, like, proper bashment parties. Okay. Like, I'm telling you, like, it was in Tottenham. There was some in Enfield. Like, from when I was young, like, me and my girls would be like, cool, you got your shorts? Yeah, we got your shorts. All right, cool, let's go. Let's put the bandana around our shorts. Like, hey. we're dancing, so it <laughs> makes a little bit more movement. Like, I was there. And my mom knew it as well. Like, mm. and she was always comfortable with that because she knew what was going on. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, she knew I was having a good time. But that's definitely, like, my influence. And, you know, going back to growing up in Tottenham, like, they, those were my Tottenham friends. Mm. And um, it's just weird when everyone moves out of the area and you don't see each other as much. And you're thinking, oh, my gosh, like, do you remember those times when, when, when we were just dancing and enjoying our life and saying, oh, my gosh, like, one day we're going to live in an apartment together. You know what I mean? Like, mm. it's just, it's crazy. So, <laughs> Con, what flag do you represent then? Okay. Flag <laughs> is Jamaican all the way because you already know the vibes. Uh, like at Carnival, like I don't know, the last time I went Carnival two years ago, I was actually in a relationship. Okay. So I thought, oh, you know what, I'm here, I'm not gonna do anything. Like I was just whining with my girls. And then I found out he was whining with girls. And I was like, <laughs> yes. why do this always happen? Like, why does it always happen to me? Like Well older, wait, wait did you catch him dots with other girls? No, I didn't catch him okay. there, but he actually saw me there. It was funny. And then um, I saw him, but he, I didn't see him dance with girls until like the next day. I was like, hold up. Let me just check his friend's 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 story on Snapchat. And I just saw it and I was just, I remember breaking <laughs> down like, why has this happened to me again? Oh, but evident. literally like, um, I think on Saturday, I, w I went to like a Latin club in okay. Camden. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I don't care about anyone. Like, even if I'm chatting to this guy and I just feel something's off and then obviously whatever. But I was just dancing, whining. I was like, gasolina. Hey, like, like, okay. literally, literally. <laughs> so, you know, what? it's just about enjoying life. Big and, facts, 100%, man. And you know what? Like, life's so short. 
and we're so, sure. we're so we're so young and i mean i'm so young like regardless of whatever as long as i know that i've fulfilled all my young years like that's mm. the only thing i wish for myself so yeah <laughs> what's your star sign then uh so my star sign is pisces I'm an emotional wreck. Yes, I know. <laughs> I don't know about Star Sign. I, I don't know. Dukes are teaming with once. But we are creative, loving, mm. and we put other people before ourselves, definitely. That's one thing. Big heart, for sure. <laughs> so what college did you go to then? Uh, so I was studying hair and makeup. Okay. Um, I was meant to go uni, I think, last year or something. I'm not going uni, but like just my year group. I mm. think it was last year or the year before. I can't even remember. But um, right now, I'm not too sure like um, what I want to do. I've been working, like I've always had a job, like from when I was 16, I've always had a job. You know, mm. I bought my car at 17. Talk about it. I, I sorted myself out. Like, Big I got, facts. Literally, like, I got my deposit from my house. Like uh. I'm sorted. Like, so I'm probably going to get into property. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking about that for next year. I wanted to get into... Um, like beauty and stuff like that because obviously i had done the makeup course but i just thought the thing that god has planned for me is even bigger than that mm. it's even bigger than this eyelash the girl that does eyelashes the girl that does nails mm. it's bigger than that mm. i don't know what it is but he's just been telling Wait, me still like young. yeah i'm still, 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 young, still young but i just know that whatever i'm gonna do i can't even think about it because I don't even have the the brain capacity that God is, is going <laughs> to have in plan for me. Like, it's mad. It's Again, mad. we're in October. Would you say you've had a good year this year? Yeah, like, definitely. Like, this year, I've definitely been able to take, you know, less crap from people. Mm. I say... Um, in the past, I've been very lenient and I've sort of been like, oh, second chances. Oh, they're not perfect. Oh, let's forgive them. Like just in general, like uh, I'm saying like friendships with girls, like family, different things. But this year I've been like, hey, <laughs> I'm pulling you up on this. Like this hey. is not happening, literally. Like, cause you cannot waste time. Big time facts. goes so quick. And um, another thing as well that I, I want to talk about, um, which I'm, I'm comfortable talking about is um in april i think it was april may i shaved my natural hair for charity what charity yeah. is that um it was cancer research hold on, hold macmillan on. actually macmillan yeah but <laughs> i have a problem with these these charities in terms yeah. of because again i mean look how long cancer research been going yeah. on for isn't it they exactly. still haven't found a cure isn't it yeah but the vaccine came out so quick isn't it for that's what i'm saying COVID, isn't it? It's, so, it's ridiculous it's it's kind of like it's really hard because you're thinking this vaccine thing anyway, I think it was planned. Mm. So I think that's why with well, this COVID thing I'm saying, I think it was planned. So, so wait, that's hold on, why... you're not vaccinated, are you? Oh yeah, I'm vaccinated. You're vaccinated. But the only reason I got vaccinated, which is another thing that's annoying me, is because I thought I was going to be traveling back and forth, back and forth. So I thought, let's make it easy. Let me get this vaccine. But because that's another get, story. Which one do you get, Johnson Johnson or Pfizer or? Uh, listen, I went wood green. I was like, <laughs> I'm in the hood, but you can put it in my mom. Like, I was like, my mom was like, why don't you go to the end for one? I was like, mom, sometimes we gotta go back. We gotta go back to the green, we gotta go back to town and get the vaccine. Like, I'm sure I'm gonna be fine. But um, yeah, like, as I was saying, um, in April, I shaved my hair because my oh, you stepdad- You completely bald? Yeah. Bald, like, bald, like me yeah, bald? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 oh, okay. like a one, like a one, like a one. Jesus. <laughs> Like a one, like a one. It suits you, but not me. me. But um, yeah, because uh, my stepdad got cancer. Um, Sorry to hear. Like, and you know what? It's it's crazy because you hear these things and you and you think, oh my gosh, like I feel so bad for that person. But when it's your own, like mm. basically my family, because he's the one that brought me up since I was three. So I was like, I have to do something. Mm. And even if you know this, let me just let me just raise this money. I raised, I think. Just like 900 pounds something like that literally money's money man money's money money is money. Money, 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 money yeah man literally i was like let me just do this and when i shaved my hair it was the most impact like i felt so like i had so much power like mm. i shaved my hair i just felt so free like and also it was like i was cutting off all the dead ends and all the dead ends of negative relationships mm. or you know friendships or anything like it was just all rebuked, like it was all gone. Oh, there's that film about that Netflix. What? What, Shana what is it? Napoli of After. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because obviously she wants to get married, and the guy, 
she thinks he's gonna propose, but he gives her a puppy instead, isn't it? What the heck? <laughs> yeah. And That's they, a have bit a, shit. they have a conflict. She shaves her hair off and she Mm-mm. meets the next guy, but the guy's got kid, a mm. kid, a girl already in it. And then there's conflict. Yeah, nothing ever after. Okay, so you had to like, basically had to refresh, restart. Yeah, restart for sure. And I think it also just it's one of those things where it's like, all right, cool. You're this age, whatever. Oh, you know, like in my life, I got a tattoo, or in my life, I got a piercing. But I can say, in my life, I've shaved my hair for charity. Your pictures. I, oh yeah, of course. I need to see that yeah, afterwards, yeah. isn't it? Okay, cool. but I just want to know: okay, yeah. Were the same guys holler at you when you had long hair? Same, still holler at you when you had yes. Oh, I'm just asking. They was like, let me stroke that bald head. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, let me see that bald head. Of course. <laughs> and you know what is so good as well is uh-huh. that I was able to rock it like mm. i did rock it for a bit it was really hard for me to get used to in the beginning i was ill quite a lot because cold. obviously it's, yeah, it's cold and i'm thinking like what the hell like men must have extra powers because my head is cold like literally <laughs> and i could obviously wear wigs like it wasn't a thing where it looked funny on me like i could switch it up and mm. you know it was it was fun it was fun but now it's growing out it's more curly um i wear it i wear it out sometimes but yeah it's just about again gaining confidence and yeah just becoming more happy with it to be honest you said you've always had a job i just don't know what's your worst job that you've had worst job primark seriously let me tell you let me tell Wait, you which right primark now, was it marble arch as well okay oxford street did you catch it on ceiling uh yeah <laughs> i remember this one time yeah there was this like ho- it's always the homeless ones yeah I've seen some foul things. Anyway, one time I saw this homeless guy come in and he's ripping off the tags and them things there. So I said to my manager, like, hey, like, come quick. Like, this guy's ripping off the tags. Mm. And he said, okay, but don't um, don't harass the customer. I said, customer? Eh? He just tried to steal. I said, I actually saved your life. Or I was like, what? Are you, like, are you crazy? Like, this customer is trying to steal. Like, what? Do you, I'm basically going to the customer, yeah. I'm like, excuse me, you are stealing. Can you please follow me to the desk? Oh, well, how's that pressure on the customer? At the end of the day, they found the confidence to try still. Like, I have to get on to them. Do you but know why are you mean? trying to be super woman for? No, okay, that's another thing with my personality, right? Mm. In general, mm. like, I want to get involved. Like, see, if I'm on a train, yeah, and I see a girl crying, I want to find out why is she cry. This one bad thing about me, then I get involved, and then I ruin my own life. Like, it's all That's wrong. all right, cool. For example, say if you see a guy and a girl arguing, and it's mm. getting serious, do you go? Do you get involved yeah, in that? Definitely. Why? You know what it is? Like, it's a, it's a trait that I've got from my dad and my grandma. It's really mad because they're both chatty, 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 and... We love giving advice. We love talking about positivity and everyone loving each other and how life's so short. And I just feel like if I can talk to them people just for two minutes, I might just change their mind about the situation that they're in. Like, I might just inspire them. Do you and know what cool. I mean? Let's react here. Basically, like, me and this girl's fighting. Oh, da 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 You come over. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Say what we're going to say. So I'll say, is everything all right? Like, listen, what's going listen on? Listen, listen, she's cheating with my brother. She gave me Wait, AIDS. wait, wait. Let's just like, let's just calm she down. She gave me SEI. Like, she gave me SEI. All right, that's mad safe. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying In to you. In a bit, I'm going to help you out. You've got to always get involved. You, you know what? Get involved. It's, it's mad and, and going more on a deeper level. Like, um, I've had girls, like my friends have called me and they've said, Tia, like, I've been in this situation. Like, I need the emergency pill. I swear down, like, I've had girls being like, I need something, da 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 And I'm like, listen, this is where you go. This is what you do. Like, I have mm. that mum kind of Vibes. vibe. Okay. And that's just how I am. Like, girls, You're natural. Yeah, yeah. Like, girls talk to, like, talk to me and ask me for advice. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm the friend that's still single. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm good at giving the advice, but I'm the friend that's still single. <laughs> but don't rush. You're no. still young. Don't no, rush. No, I'm not. Not now. I'm enjoying it. So, so be honest, what kind of guys do you attract then? Do I attract? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've spoken to footballers, mm-hmm. like I've spoken to dancers, I've spoken to artists. Like, I think the thing that I love the most is people that are creative mm-hmm. and people that have, that are making money. Like, I'm not saying like necessarily like, to give me, but when you're making money and you know that you're getting an allowance every single month, like you know that you're stable mm. and you know you don't have to worry. Do you know what I mean? So that's one thing, like for me, is big. Like someone needs to be making money. Like again, I've got certain friends they want to know. So the who guys is that? No, no, no. 
Uh, wait, what? The hood guys, isn't it? Because obviously that. You, okay, not really. I've dated, I think, like one guy that was kind of doing something dodgy, and I'm not with it. Like, okay. I'm really not with it. There's so many other options. Even if you need to work out Primark, like. If, you be with a guy that works at Primark? Yes. Seriously? Because at least he's getting money, but if he's doing something else that like is creative as well, <laughs> then that's fine. Okay. Because at the end of the day, like that's only temporary. And mm. from what I know from like different people in my life, it's like that's not gonna last forever. And at the end of the day, like if you're gonna have kids, if you're gonna have family in the future that's not going to be beneficial because you're going to be like, oh, just in case I might need to do this. Like, what if please come? Da, 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 da. Like, always going to be on edge. Like, I remember there was one time mm -hmm. I was in the car with this guy that had stuff that he wasn't meant to have. Wait, was he from what area? Uh, He was from Halsden. Okay. Yeah, I think Halsden. So I remember just sitting in the car and looking at him and just thinking, actually, you ain't even all that. And on top <laughs> of it, you want to be doing this stuff when I'm in your car. You know what, yeah? You better just drop me home and give me a Big Mac with that as well. Like, I was just like, nah. I was just, and the thing is that he was a big man. Like, he was literally like... How old? He was like 28. <laughs> and I was literally thinking like, you're 28. Mm -hmm. Cool, you're living at your mom's house. That's not deep. But it's like... You driving? He was driving. Okay. But I was thinking, like, get a grip. Like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> this is so poor. Like, but why did it take you for you to be in the car to realize that, though? I didn't realize it till a, like a month later. Because in the beginning, it was like an emotion, like, you know, when those relationships where it's like an emotional getaway from the other relationship that it's rebound. kind of like, yeah, basically like a rebound. And then I was like, kind of like catching feelings. And I was like, I'm not too sure. Then he was just like, I don't know, like, I was just thinking for his age, he just should have been more mature, like, I was like, you're actually still doing this, like, you're going round and you're meeting these, like, Eastern European people to do this crap, like, it's just so <laughs> dead, like, do something better. <laughs> okay, um, let's check this conversation, let's talk about eating with your ex. Oh my gosh, you saw that. <laughs> How did that come about? Okay, so, eating with my ex, they emailed me about two years ago. They randomly emailed you? Yeah, they literally emailed me. And they said, um, hey, um, we have this show. Da, 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 da. They didn't tell me what it was at first. They just said, hey, we have this show and we really want you to do it. And it's going to be on BBC. So I said, OK, cool. Um, so then they said, oh, and it, it's, it's called Eating With Your Ex. Mm -hmm. So obviously when they told me, um, me and my ex were still back and forth. But I remember telling him, I'm telling him, please, let's do this. Please, let's do this because this is gonna help us so much, like just to get our faces out there. Like, come on, like people already knew about us anyway. Like, cause our relationship was quite big. Cause oh. we used to make music. So I was okay. like, come on. yeah, I was like, come on, let's just do this. And um, and then, yeah, then we done the show and it came out this year in May. And I remember just watching it and thinking, I look good. <laughs> I, I also myself walking, I was like, damn, Shadi, you better go. What was the edits like though? Was it probably edit The out? edits was, good mm. it wasn't too bad towards the end they did make me look like a bit of a simp and a bit of a beg and i wasn't that at all like i was just telling him you know like i'm sort of done with this da, 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 da. like even there was a question where they didn't air mm. and um he was like have you slept with anyone else and then he was like he was like no and then i was like i know that i had so i wanted him to say i was saying to him like ask me ask me like <laughs> You say you, if you, regardless if you have, like, just ask me so it looks like I'm sticking it on you. Uh. Do you know what I mean? So, um, obviously, that didn't get aired, and then we started having a big argument. Like, a lot of things were cut out. We did argue a lot in the show. Mm. Um, and then afterwards, like, there was different shows that I was meant to do this year, but because of COVID, it was kind of twisted about. Can you say what shows, or? Uh, yeah, um, I was meant to be on a show called Are You The One? Okay. So that is on MTV. Mm. So that's even bigger than Eat With My Ex. Mm. Um, but obviously, like, different complications happen with that, like, with COVID and everything. Um, I've also, I really, really want to do Love Island. Like, Seriously? really, really want to uh... do. Like, I got, like, one email back one time that they saw my application and they called me. But then I just still felt like... Mm, I'm a bit young, like I can, I still have a few more years. Like if I want to do this, I can. But mm. it's kind of a quick way to get bait. But big facts, literally, blue tick, get a blue tick. 
literally blue tick <laughs> and then people forget about you and unless you're really making a change like Wes or any other person that yeah, you was jump on the there, music again and then we yeah. can just pick one big tune and you can like I don't want uh, I don't know that's just a quick getaway but I don't know <laughs> I'm not really a lover of a fan I'm more of a what's that show I watched on Netflix oh Two Hearts Handle oh okay that show that's my well. show um who's gonna do with that I wasn't going to do that. Okay, but I was the, about to say this. The hey. makers of that, uh -huh. like, they was emailing me talking about that show and Naked Attraction. Okay. And I was like, oh, hell no. Now. <laughs> I ain't showing no bad, bad for nobody. Like, and then for Naked Attraction, they pay about, I think it's like 3K. Is it and I thought, yeah? listen, I'm worth more than that. Like, I mm. know for a fact. And also, I just wouldn't do that. I, I, like, I just feel like the people that go on there are just very insecure and they just want to be bigged up about their body i don't know i just wouldn't go on that anyway i just feel like the bar is too high um but can yeah. you say how much are you, you, or you can't say that um i just wanted was it k's pardon was it k's was it in the k figure it was enough oh, okay no, okay. Let's just okay, say okay, that. okay 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 um it wasn't as much as you think let's say that because you're really you're only shown, if you put it all together, you're only shown for about 10 minutes. Remember, the show's about 30 minutes per episode. Mm. So it's like you're literally shown for 10 minutes. And it honestly, it was not a lot. Um, before that show, I've done a few other things. I've done some adverts, um, done some Asda, uh, was it Asda, England squad announcement a few years ago, mm. NatWest. So I was always in the light, let's say. What well, first dates? Have you gone first dates? Oh, I would love to do that. Same here, you know. I saw the application. That's crazy. I saw the application <laughs> about two nights ago because mm. um, I get emails from some agencies. I saw that one and um, oh, what was the other one now? It was that one. Oh, yeah, obviously Love Island. And there's another one called Cabins. I don't know if you've seen that. I think it was uh, BBC. Mm. Um, it's like you, you're in a cab cabin with... Um, the first, like person you meet the first time and you have to stay like overnight with them just I you think, two yeah in the cabin literally Ay. i think it's a few days is there drinks yeah there's drinks like, you're in the <laughs> night, you're in the cabin, and they're actually like looking for people from now to the end of october so i'm gonna apply for it mm -hmm. just for the vans and just mm, sort yeah, of see problem. where it goes yeah literally <laughs> but the only thing with those shows it's so annoying like eating with my ex it literally aired like eight months after so mm. you're completely different you yeah, know yeah, by yeah, then yeah. um i think i had my hair shaved like it was all done sort of thing or yeah it was, it, yeah but also it was um the promotion was crazy it was on snapchat like you know your snapchat advertisement mm. my face was there okay Lit and then it was like eating with your ex would you get back with them because of this and then it would show a clip like why do you cheat on me <laughs> it was mad it was mad so have you spoken to him since then uh yeah like we've spoken um just like to check on each other like mm. there's nothing there like we don't meet up uh nothing like that at all um he's doing well and i wish him the best and he wishes me the best mm. but um i rebuke his spirit at all costs <laughs> <laughs> and i say that to him like i just like i rebuke his spirit like i could talk to you for 10 minutes but that's about it because um yeah don't take this the wrong way but you look like someone that will go and take me out as one of the girls it's crazy because i i would love the thing is is that in the beginning when mm. i found out about you with my ex i was like cool let me do this one show mm. let me go to the next one the next one the next one for me it was just about how can i get in the limelight mm. do you know what i mean so i think i would do that like that'd be fun it'll be like if you don't like it don't like it like, I'm <laughs> uh, I don't know. it might be good yeah i hear that well let's get into the game this game is called you decide Okay. So basically, because you're by yourself, basically there's some names in the pot. Okay. So what we do, you take a sip. Take well, you're not drinking right now, but you take yeah. a sip, yeah? And you take a name out, and we just want to know what you think of the person. We, I'm like, scared. Uh, uh. Okay, well, let me have this, uh, look, <laughs> this Coke, which has nothing in it, because I'm not trying to love... Mm-mm. Uh, okay, so what, so you want me to take out now, yeah? Yeah, yeah, take out. What if I don't know the person? Okay, hopefully I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Steph Dunn. What do you think of Steph Lano? She is, like, she's just so cool, yeah? And the reason why she's cool mm -hmm. is because she sort of brings this UK dancehall thing, and that was really what I was going for, like, in the beginning when I first made music. Mm. I was thinking, if she can do it, I can do it. Like, and mm. once you make that kind of music, 
like that one genre like UK dancehall there's so many pages like, I remember when my first song came out like all these UK dancehall pages like people from Jamaica with me, <laughs> me like my auntie's auntie like everyone was just like the community, the Soka community, and you know, the Soka. Dance, yeah, yeah. I love Soka. Like the Soka, I love Soka. Dance, like everyone was just messaging <laughs> me and was like, oh, we want to collab. Like I was working with IQ a bit. Mm -hmm. um, is it, uh, what's his name? Is it Dejour Gardner? I can't remember his name. I think <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. yeah, like, there's a few other people, and I think it's just. It brings the UK, like, shows them our culture and what it is about. And it's about having fun and, you know, dancing, whining, being <laughs> sexy. Like, I think that's what she brings. And as well, like, I just feel like she makes a girl feel bossed up. Like, even today, I was listening to her song, Senseless, yeah? Mm -hmm. when the one that she done with Tory Lanez. Mm -hmm. And she switches up her genres. Like, she can do the slow thing or she can do the upbeat thing. Or she can do the thing where she's cussing someone. Like, that's how <laughs> I want to feel. Like, I want to feel like a baddie. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, cool. put that name to the side. Take another sip and take another name. Okay. Just sip the Coke. Okay. <laughs> mm hmm Okay. I'm scared. Okay. Who's this? Okay. I actually saw her at Wireless. Is it Miss La Familia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. actually saw her at Wireless. And um, she was really nice. She was re I didn't really speak to her too much. I spoke more to her manager, mm. um, who was also really nice. And I don't listen to her music that much, but it definitely gives me like bad B vibes. Like she mm. is 100% that boss, like, and she owns it. And I think I'm not too sure like about her, like where she's from or whatever like that. But all I know is that she's got style. She's got drip as well. And she's, also, when I saw her, she she saw that I was an artist. Like, even when I was speaking to her about certain experiences, like, she was telling me, like, this industry have to be strong-minded. Like, you have to be level-headed because mm. people will try to take advantage of you when Big they bets. see that your talent or they see that you're getting somewhere. So, yeah, she was cool. No problem. <laughs> put that name to the side, take another sip. Okay. Off my coat. We're just waiting Ooh. for one name to come out. Tipsy talk wave I'm Wednesdays. Scared. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. Do this. Doll. Oh, okay. She's a rapper. <laughs> okay, yeah. She's. I know who she is, but obviously I'm just like trying to think. All right, cool. She done a song recently with Digger D. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard it on TikTok. It's extremely explicit, right? And I just think, you know what? Go for it. Like, she's more of the diss track kind of person. Like, I see that she disses a lot of girls and stuff like that, mm. which I think can be a hard game if, you know, you ain't got the bars, but she's got the bars. So, so if she sends for you, would you send back? I'll be like, baby, take it. Like, <laughs> I got my high notes over here. Like, mm. but at the same time, if you say to Mariah Carey, would you get in a fight? She wouldn't because she just believes that she's that chick. And mm. that's how I feel as well. So. <laughs> Quick question before we carry on. Do you look down on females that don't write their own lyrics or? No, I think okay. like as long as when you sing the lyrics, you own it. And like, I, I think that if you don't, if you don't write your own lyrics, I guess it's harder because it's like you, when you're writing lyrics, you're feeling what you're saying. Like mm. if you're not feeling what you're saying, sometimes it can be difficult and that will come through as well when you hear the song. Um, so I think it's not a bad thing, but just own it. Do you yeah. ever do like a drill song? Yeah, I've tried to do an R&B drill song. I've heard some instrumentals. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing some diss track stuff. Um, diss track? That. Yeah. To who? Just all the previous guys. I just feel okay. like they all deserve to be drawn out. Well, you um, say names in it. Huh? You say names. Uh, I think I'll say like nicknames. Oh, okay, okay. I might even say mm, <laughs> I might even I might even draw out a few people. But um, one of my songs I actually did write about like my relationship as well. It's out uh, comfortable. Mm. So um, I, it worked. Like a lot of people love that, and they could feel me like through the lyrics. So I want people to to you know relate to that as well. So yeah. So take another sip and take another name. Okay. Bap. Sit. Mm. I'm taking, oh, I took two. Oh, now this Nadia Rose, yes. Okay, uh, let's talk about Nadia Rose, yeah. Mm. I love Nadia Rose because when I was 14, I used to 
I used to watch like Paige Cakey, Nadia Rose, and I always used to think, I want to be like these girls. So I remember I made like one song and it sounded like uh, Nadia's and I just thought, yeah, this is what I want to do. Then it was like, actually, I don't want to do this music. I can't keep it up, but she is just sick. Like her rap lines, I think she was like a Stormzy's cousin or something mm. as well. So um, yeah, like the same, like as everyone else, like just boss vibes like boss vibes that you can do it like just because you're female doesn't mean you can't do certain things like <laughs> that's that's the vibes that i get with nadia for sure okay so take another sip and take another name okay <coughs> okay let me see okay this is an artist that is just so sexy oh wait it's me <laughs> um, that's what let's get for. to that uh-huh. <laughs> So I would describe Tia Maria Shanti. I would say emotional. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I would say like just vibes, like just a journey. I would say mm. I don't know. It really depends on what kind of song, because obviously I do so many genres. Like I wouldn't f- say that I just do one genre. Like before I was like, oh, I want to do UK dancehall. But then I realized I've also got that opera side so I can try to do R&B. Like, I would just say that I'm an artist that wants people to not just like get bored of one thing. Like, I want them to be like, oh my days, and she does drill R&B as well. And she does this, (laughs) and she does this, and she does this. So yeah, that's how I describe myself. What do you think is lacking in the UK music scene anyway? Lacking? Mm. I'd say right this year, there's actually been quite a few people that's been popping, obviously like Central C, um like i don't know like uh tion wayne um mm. rd is it rd yeah like a few artists have been popping with some new stuff i said last year was a bit dry this year it's good and um, also i song as well who done that um that r&b uh, love song the mm. r&b drill love song uh something like never heard a love song on drill something mm-hmm. so i think it's definitely popping um i think it's just about finding your place within it within the industry and that's why i've sort of you know taken a step back and been like you know what i'm gonna release a mad album in like a year or two Hmm. and i know that i'm gonna work on it properly find my sound and so when people hear it they're gonna be like okay cool this one's like a slow r&b then it just jumps to uko dance or then it's just like (laughs) like i want to be like what I was saying before, is it the word versatile? Like, mm. I want people to be like, wow, 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 wow. So I think I'll find my place definitely mm. in the industry. I'm just taking my time. You got like a name for the album or the mixtape? No, but all I know is that it's going to be a whole lot of emotion. Like, <laughs> I think more so just experiences. I've been writing one song um, recently and it's more so like, it's more so about how how what i was saying before like i give my heart to people like i try you know do everything i try to look at the best interest in people mm. but then also i need to sort of hold back and say hey like you can't always do this like that's not your role to be mum all the time like mm. kind of thing so <laughs> that's that's the kind of um song that i'm i'm working on and inspiration for that was um an artist called Sabrina Claudio, which is like a R&B jazz. Mm. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I hear that. I hear. What about acting, Miss? Acting? Mm. Um, I used to go to a lot of um, performing arts schools. Um, I went to, I went to like five. Mm. Like um, I was doing the adverts, like I said before. Um, right now I'm currently working with um, TikTok. Um, working with the CEO, we're going to start doing some promotion okay. and some advertisements. So that's going to be more so like acting. Um, but yeah, not so much. A funny story is um, about, I think a few years ago, I got, no, I don't know, like five years ago, I got casted for um, a show that was on Netflix called The Witcher, right? It's like Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. but it's The Witcher. And um, I remember I went into the audition and the guy said to me, you're left with 12 other girls for them to choose who they want, yeah? Mm. This was big money. I'm saying- Here we go. Big money. Uh I'm saying like- Life changing. Yeah, I'm saying life changing. Like that would have been me, like that's it. Like I would have been like Zendaya or someone that big, yeah. So imagine, so I'm coming out of the audition now, I'm feeling so confident. 
And so then they bring me back in and they're like, um, we want we want to get you into the the last few twelve uh, ten or twelve people, and he's like, okay, let me just check your details, make sure everything's fine. You know, like this is going to be filmed in Canada. Like we just got to make sure that we've got everything. Okay. This is big. And um, I remember him looking at my details um, and saying, "Tia, I'm so sorry." And I was like, "What? Like, why? Why sorry? Like, what's wrong?" He said, "This role is 18, oh. and you're 17." at the time oh. and i was like what are you allowing me Come literally on, year. and on. because the thing is with acting is that if you're well basically that's like a child yeah you they have to pay for certain things mm. um it's like a license uh they they need to pay for a certain license for the amount of time they can take you out of school and different stuff okay. like okay so um i remember just going in the car and crying and Imagine. saying to my mom like what like is this is this actually what's happened like i've got so far and my mom just said to me there's a bigger plan quick question yeah mm. do you see the girl that got the role uh no i haven't watched the show oh, okay i just wonder um, if she cute or not in it that's why isn't it that's actually quite funny i would like to find out who it <coughs> yeah, was yeah like lesbian yeah <laughs> I'd be like, that's my life you stole you know, my life because <laughs> i was meant to be some um lion goddess or mm -hmm. uh, uh princess or something like that and i remember just thinking like i had the big curly hair like mm. it's basically like this like big curly hair and i just honestly thought i was gonna get it and it was just because of the age do i get you a top boy huh I get you a top boy i need to be a top boy <laughs> i think i'll be such a good like little baby mom or something like that hot baby mom no i'm joking so are you watching have you watched squid game yet no i haven't watched that and the only reason why i haven't watched it is I don't know why, like, I'm just, I ju I'm just not interested in it. I don't know. No, I've seen all the cloud. I've seen all the cloud about it, but I, I just don't know. I've been watching, um, like, On My Block. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I literally finished that, like, the whole Tuesday mm. night. I just, it was Monday night, actually Monday night. I watched the whole thing in one night. And um, I watched, like, Housewives. It's really strange. Well, Ponya and that rose there. Yeah, Soon yeah. Soon making that. Yeah, yeah. Uh. I watched... I watch Housewives and the only reason why I watch it is because these women live a life of luxury and that's what, where I want to be. I hate, I'm, no, because I'm not the same. Mm. I, call, me, I'm, I watch Love and Hip Hop, innit? But at yeah. the same time, it teases me a little bit. Like, oh, you lot living like in yeah. places like this. And I'm like, yeah, not yeah, stone rope, like, but I'm in like here in London, kind of, kind of struggling, isn't it? I can't do it to a certain extent. It's like teasing you in your face a little bit, man. No, nah, it, is, it is hard, but... It helps you think you can get there. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. You can 100% get there. And it's just about, if you if you say to yourself, right, cool. Say I was, say to my, say I was like really, really overweight, yeah. And I was saying to myself, no, like you're going to get slim. You're going to get skinny. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're gonna... If you feed that energy inside, it mm. will, it will show. If you say to yourself, no, 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 keep, keep positive, like keep positive, keep positive, don't cry, da, 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 keep motivated, that's going to show eventually. So if mm. you say to yourself, I'm going to be at this certain level, you're going to get there, like mm. 100%. It's what you put in to yourself. So you're happy with your size now? Yeah. Oh. I'm just asking. I got it going. I'm just, yeah, I'm just I'm asking, miss. I'm just, to put, I'm just asking. I got it in. going, okay. I'm just asking, just asking, just asking. So 100%. what else are you watching then? Huh? What else are you watching? um that's it really um i i like watching a few um uh i say like youtubers nella rose i love nella rose mm. um when she does like girl talks um stuff like that i find that fun and really comforting almost like it's a friend or something like that mm. like um so i watch that um more so i just work a lot so yeah that's it. <laughs> i hear that i hear that again what's up and instagram went down oh my days how do yeah. you cope so obviously I was okay because I was going for my own thing anyway. So I literally was just watching on my block. Like oh, I okay, just then. banged that out and on snap. Oh yeah, because I hadn't posted anything so <laughs> sexy in a while. So First um, traps, yeah? literally, so I was like, I'm free everybody. And mm -hmm. I remember just posting and the next day I woke up and I had like, what, like 2K views on my snap. Okay. Like, that like the messages were rolling in. I was like, yeah, I'm opening the doors and uh -uh. I'm gonna close them at 10. <laughs> but I was like, everyone get in now, get in now. Mm -mm. But it, it's, it's just fun and it's just like refreshing to know that, hey, 
you're pretty, you're gonna get through it, you're mm. fine, like you're not alone, and people still think you're sexy, so just do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I'm getting missed. I mean, there's been some tragic stories regarding females in the UK right now, isn't it? Yeah. So, do you feel safe in London? Oh, yeah, I've seen a few things. Um, I definitely feel safe in London. Like, where I live is, uh, it's a bit, even though it's Enfield, it's a bit out, like, mm. um, it's more like Cuffley. Uh, but yeah, I definitely feel safe. Like now I'm dry, like I drive, so I'm fine, like in the street or something like this. Like I, I remember I had one experience and I'll never ever forget. I was at Highbury in Islington, right? Mm. And I was thinking, why is the trains just stopped all of a sudden? How is this officer telling me that they think they found a bomb in the station? Hey. If you saw how fast I ran, you think they can catch me? No, listen, that, I remember that experience. But then they said it was just a mysterious package. It was mad. It was mad. But obviously, like, that's just a mad experience. But I definitely feel safe in London. Like, when I was going to these bashment things when I was younger, I remember like walking through that cemetery tottenham cemetery and then we used to see like the big group of boys and you know the gangs and i remember one time my friend was like tia like go slow because if they see us like mm. something might happen and i remember one time a boy must have clocked us right i never paced this so fast in my life I was running like there's like hey come here come here <laughs> they were chasing us serious and then my friend's flat because i didn't like by that time i was out of the area so mm. i didn't know too much about the gangs and stuff like that and i remember my friend just telling me no that's this this gang and she just said tia if they see us run like even if you can't see me run mm. and i remember we ran to her flat and they couldn't get in and they were banging the doors like hey hey why are you running away from us <laughs> And I just never forget that night. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like it's really changed here. It's just really different. So yeah, mm. like. Mm. You, so you 100% feel safe in London? Yeah, I feel safe. Okay. I think there's other places that could be worse. Um, you know, like I see a lot of things in Brazil, um, mm. a lot of things even like Sierra Leone where I'm from, like a lot of uh, trafficking, like uh, all that stuff. I feel I feel safe, 100%. What, what country are you gonna travel to next then? I am. I should be going Paris soon. I've been saying it for about... By yourself? Oh, no, no. Luckily, I have friends there. Oh, okay. Oh, well, friends no, are here. someone's going to take you there, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. I'm going, like, with a few friends that I've met. Um, and also, because I was meant to go there ages ago, and obviously with this whole vaccine thing, it was all a bit long. And, like, I have my tickets. It's so annoying, because basically, I paid for my tickets to obviously go to travel to see whoever. But then... When I tried to refund my tickets, I could only refund it as a voucher, not actually the money. Mm -mm. So I have to go anyway, but I'm obviously going to be going with my girls and I'm, I know I'm going to have a good time. But I just said to them, girls, don't let me drink. Like, honestly, <laughs> do not let me drink. Like, it's so annoying. Like, I have one friend and every single time I've seen her, I've been drunk. She's never seen me like sober. Okay. Like, we've met up like a few times and every single time she sees me, I'm drunk. I'm just like, oh. Girl, you gotta know me for me. Like even tomorrow, I literally have to make up to her for my drunk episode yesterday. Like tomorrow, I'm taking her to go get her hair done because I feel so bad. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Before we go on the break, I just wanna know, it's Black History Month this month. Yeah, I'm excited. Why is that? I'm excited because I just feel like now with my TikTok platform, I wanna just do so much. I want to introduce gospel. I want to introduce more black culture. And you know, it's really difficult with, um, especially like mixed people. Like, you know, mm. there's this sort of idea that if you're not cultured or if you don't have a black dad, if you don't have black mom, it's just stuff like this. And I just feel like people need to exit that out. Like it's really, it's really hard because I've obviously been brought up with my mom, my black side. So your mom's black. Yeah. My mom's black. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. obviously, I've just seen all that. So sometimes when I'm in certain situations, it's like, oh, but this is what I know. I know Aki and Swordfish. I know the patties. I know roti. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I know all about that stuff. So I think I just want to bring more of, of my upbringing and my, like what I've been taught to my platforms for sure. I've always been kind of curious regarding mixed race people in terms of like the mental illness because again you're conflict with two and both sides kind of thing yeah. like the black side you got the white side yeah. isn't it so I just want to know I think was there a problem for yourself growing up um like I think it honestly just depends like I feel like if you're brought up with 
your white side you learn different things and it's just very different like because i've been brought up on my black side i relate to a lot of my black friends like mm. it'll be like little things like ah uh, on a sunday morning when your mom's hoovering and then mm. you just hear like do 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 hey like, I mean, like, talk about it no 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 run that back run that back run that back run that back or like run that back miss run that back literally <laughs> like when your mom's hoovering and it's like do 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 like listen mm. like all of that DJ Lani, all of that stuff, mm -hmm. like in the mornings, like that's just what I'm used to. Mm. And so even like the way my mom, you know, dealt with me when I was being a brat mm. or something like this, it, it, it's, it's very different. And I'm happy that I've been brought up that way because I love my culture. I can talk about it. I can do my hair. I can, mm. do, you know, do you understand? Like, it's just so much different. I, I don't know. If it was more, if I was brought up more on my white side, I don't think I would have as much love for the music mm. and just the vibes and the dancing. I wouldn't even have the rhythm. Mm. I don't think 100%. And I know I do. So <laughs> I think that helped for sure. And yeah. <laughs> have you been in a situation where a boy can't dance? <laughs> I, I've been in situations where boys can't do a lot of things. And I, baby, you better put in the work. But, so what do you do then? <laughs> like, I just want to know from a girl, what do you do when like a guy comes behind you, starts dancing, you can't, and he can't dance? What do you do? Um, you just do what you got to do, and you just got to continue. And then when you get bored, you got to say, okay, that was enough. Thank you. <laughs> like, see me, I'm really bad, yeah? I'll be at clubs, and I'll be like dancing with a guy, like proper getting into it, dancing, dancing, dancing. Mm. And then I can just stand up and say, okay, bye, next one. Like, I can be like that and I don't Wait, know next one and, and go straight next next yeah, guy. Yeah, like go straight to next guy but be like And dancing. he's right there. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Like unless I find like a connection. If okay. I don't, then I'm just gonna like I'm gonna enjoy it. Like we're gonna have a good time and then I'm gonna go like to the another bit. Probably do the same thing. You're probably gonna see me, like literally. I don't hey. know. Yeah. But have you been in a situation where a guy's just too hungry, like he just won't let you go kind of thing? Yeah, like for example, that's that's where it comes with like controlling. So when it goes whining, like I remember, this is so annoying. Like my ex used to do this thing here that when I, when I was like whining on him, he would like put his hand on my head, like as I'm whining, and it's like I'm going like this, and it's like why are you doing this? How am I doing? It was so embarrassing, and like oh, I swear down, like he's probably gonna hear this, but I swear, like. I was just like, why? Like, why are you doing that? I don't know. Or like, then when they grab your waist, it's like, I'm trying to move and you're like stopping me. Like, <laughs> oh, I hate that. I literally hate that. But yeah. have you been like, obviously you said you're more into your black side. Has there been a situation where your kind of white friends, like you're still not too involved in their kind of culture, the white side? You know what it is? It's like, I've always, I, I was actually working at a nursery mm. um, near my house, like near Enfield. And, um, I was the closest to black there, mm. like literally, like there was no <laughs> black people, it was just me. And I was really like depressed. I didn't want to be there because mm. I felt like an outcast. And you know, I remember the girls used to come up to me and they used to be like, oh my gosh, like when I had big curly hair, they'd be like, oh my gosh, like, is this your natural hair? Like, uh, like, is that your natural draw or jawline or is that your natural this, that? And they were just amazed, like, or say for example, I don't know, like some of the kids, this is why I don't, that's why I don't know, work in a nursery anymore. Some of the kids were really feisty, yeah? Mm. And I thought, if you was my pitney, I would give you one lick. <laughs> but obviously, like, you can't do that in a nursery, innit? But I love kids because they tell the truth, yeah, how they, they feel. Yeah, they tell the truth. But I remember, like, there were some kids, they were generally being naughty. Obviously, you can't do certain things in nurseries. But there's a way to discipline them and a way to talk to them. Mm. And I just felt like sometimes these girls were so lenient and I was thinking, boy, if this was my little sister or if this was, <laughs> I, I swear down, like, I would have been like, right, stop it. Like, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And it was hard. And I was only there for about two months um, because after a while I said to my mum, I said, mum, I can't do it. Like, mm. I, I can't relate to any of these girls. Like, I'm talking to these, these girls about, like, imagine I'm saying to them, oh, do you know about, like, Caribbean music? And then they're just telling me like what Sean Paul. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like, yes. are you mad? Like, yes. are you actually mad? Like, Ja Cure. Like, there's other people. Do you know what I mean? Or like, they're just showing me the basic songs. Or like, yes. or, like it was a me. And it's just uh. like, nah. Like, there's other things. Like, 
Um, so yeah, it was like at, at first it was, it was difficult, but I'm just happy I left because I, I couldn't relate. Mm. Honestly, I couldn't relate. And it's funny because going back to the mixed thing and stuff like that, whenever I meet people, mm. they always think, all right, cool. She's mixed. Mm. Let's assess her mm. and see what side is she more on so we know how to banter with her. And mm. I've had that. I've had my friends say to me, Tia, like when I first met you, like I didn't realize how much, so much on your black side you were. Like mm. when they're coming in my car and they're hearing the reggae and all mm. them things, they're like, or they're hearing like, 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 <laughs> like, yes. like when they're hearing my bass and thing, like oh, they don't realize. They're like, literally, they're like, oh, oh, oh. like literally. <laughs> Or, you know, like they're hearing the decks the dab. Talk about it. Literally, they're like, raw, like, so you're proper on your side. Like, even when I'm playing my reggae in my car with my grandma, like, she's like, how do you know this song? Mm. It's, yeah. I'll be yeah. honest, Miss, yeah, I fall victim on that because I would have I would assumed, I would be the one of guys that like, I'm not too sure which side yeah, is on yeah. it. So I'll oh, wait, innit? Yeah, I'm and too the sure, thing is, people do think that when they see But is that a bad thing, though? I don't think it's bad because. I love surprising people. Okay. And I love people being like, oh, damn. Okay, so she cultured. Like, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I want people to be like, to be like, rah, she actually knows her stuff. Mm. And it's also funny because when I, like, sometimes at work, I have like these customers. I remember like there was this Jamaican lady. She came <laughs> in the other day, yeah. She was vet. I don't know about what, 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 yeah. And she was like, um, she came to the, the till. She's like, where the coffee? Where the coffee? <laughs> and I said to her, I said to her, listen, I said, hear me now. I was like, calm down. I was like, just calm down. I said, listen, whatever you're going through, you can't bring that to me, in it. I was like, she's like, all right, sorry, darling. Da, da, da. Uh... And I said, here's the coffee. And then I gave her like a hug. And I said to her, just call off the man. And she was laughing. Like, she was like, yeah. where are you from? Where are you from? Da, da, da. I was like, I'm from Spanish town. Uh, <laughs> talk <laughs> about it. Uh, shocked. Uh, He's like, yes, yes, I'm Jamaican. <laughs> but I never thought that. And obviously, when she heard me speak, she was like, all right, cool. Like, but you surprise people every day, innit? So mm -hmm. it's good. <laughs> Tia, we're going to have a quick break right now. So, start your socials. Where can people find you at your social media? So my social media is Tia Marie Ashanti. Um, on everything, Instagram, Snap, TikTok, Tia Maria Shanti. So check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Tipsy Talk, Wavy Wednesday, Champagne the Conversation. Here we go. Jeez. <laughs>
run my own thing, I do what I like. Yeah. This boy got me feeling so crazy. That's why he been calling me baby. This boy got me moving so shady. Cause I turned to a bad bitch lady. Back just like that. The way I pick it up so now. The way I want it down low now. Now you want it, now you look it. Then you want me tonight. The way I pick it up so now. Yo, yo, what's going on, people? We're back right now, yeah. Tipsy talk, wavy Wednesday, champagne and conversation, banter before bed, getting drunk with Jay. <laughs> and with a special guest, Tia Marie. Woo! She's got me wave right now because she's not drinking, so I have to drink for both of us. Exactly, <laughs> taking double shots for sure. Yeah, talk about it. <laughs> um, I'm not upset with you, Miss, yeah. The reason mm. why, because again. I'm scared. <laughs> no, 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 because obviously your social media hasn't got your music on it. And that's yeah. what I like about it. Why is that? Okay, so let's talk about that. So the last song that I dropped, mm. um, you know, as I was saying before, there was two females that were on that song and one of them, she was like, all right, cool. Like, I don't really want to take music seriously. So Tia, like, I'm gonna be honest with you, like, just take me out the song. And I said, cool. Um, the other one, she didn't financially have the money to do a video. And I said to her, listen, a hundred pound ain't even gonna pay for the cameraman. So if you wanna do this thing, you gotta, like, we're not gonna make money because we're new artists. Mm. But if you wanna do this thing, we gotta do it properly. I've gotta drop a track. I haven't dropped a track, a track in a few months. I need to drop something. Tell me now, are you with me or not? And she was like, cool, fine, leave it. I don't wanna do it, da 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 da, da. And she was like a close family friend as well. So when my song came out, you know, on YouTube, you can do promotion. So I tried to do my promotion and it kept getting declined. Mm. And on my video, I was getting like random accounts messaging me saying, oh, you, you stole this person's lyrics. Da, 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 mm. da, da. And her name, it was her name of the girl that, um, that basically cared or whatever. Um, and it's strange because she's a big woman as well. Like older than me and I was thinking you're actually carrying yourself on like that like I'm just an innocent girl compared like I'm just so like so young like compared to you like why are you even targeting me and she was um making fake accounts on my social media like there was one time I was ghosting I didn't post nothing for like a month because like this girl was proper going ham even got to the point where she was so like jealous and everything she tried to contact my mom's workplace serious there was a lot like harassment how old is she probably about 28 29. she's still and she's doing that literally and she has a whole pitney as well but anyway <laughs> we're not gonna bail her out we're just gonna talk about it but yeah, i'm yeah, thinking like yeah. you're a grown woman and she really ruined she really ruined me like she she was bringing down my video and obviously you saw like comfortable got 11k mm. um fantasy vibe it got what 16k something like that that wasn't on my channel but that's still good mm. but the fact that comfortable got 11k which should mean that my next song should get at least 20k big facts do you get it so obviously from when she was uh, bl uh blocking the video or putting dislikes obviously youtube clocks that and youtube will not promote something that thinks that it's going to be against the law or mm. thinks that it's bringing someone down or something like this so I just couldn't promote my song and like she, it was, she just honestly she just ruined it and she's still making music now I think she's trying um but she even like was trying to draw me out on uh, social media and everything but the thing is that I was so clever that when we first started the song I made everyone sign a contract mm. that this is what is this and this is what is this and I wrote the whole song myself like every single thing and she knew that and I in fact, it's funny because if you hear the original compared to the one that's out now, it's completely different because everything that she wanted to say in the song, I took that out because I thought, hell no, no one's going to take me to, to court. Mm. Like, I know how this industry works. People can, you know what I mean? Like, even, um, you know that song, uh, that fun, 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 mm. when he says, living the vida loca, he took that from that other song. Yeah, yeah, so that he actually went to court for that. Added, yeah, yeah, and then they couldn't make a lot of money off the song. I didn't even know yeah. that. Yeah, so you have to be extremely careful. And I said to her, like, I know how it works, so why would I use your mm. lyrics and whatever? And and then after that, the harassment stopped. Like, 
and my mom just spoke to her and just said to her, listen, like, you have a child, like, you have to be careful, like, how you're carrying yourself, like, you're basically trying to bully someone on social media, like, it was a lot, but then I just thought at the same time, like, I swear to you, I spent so much on this video, the, that place, like, that I filmed out was this massive mansion in Highgate, mm. cost me an arm and a leg, yeah, I'm paying for that, my outfit, my makeup artist, um, my lighting, I'm paying for everything, and then this girl's just gone and crushed it. But then I just mm. thought, you know what, like, that's why I'm just gonna chill with the music, so then when I come out with my album, everyone's gonna be like, wow, this is where she's been. And I just want a fresh start, basically, so yeah. So what would you say the, um, the difference between a, a woman and a bitch? A woman and a, a bitch is someone that don't want to be happy for you, yeah? Mm. That's somebody that, they're insecure in their self. Like this woman, like, she always wanted to do music, right? But obviously she had a kid, different things got in the way, da 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 I don't have that responsibility. So I'm ready at an advantage where I can go studio when I want. I can, if I have the money, like I can spend it on that. Like I don't have to think about other things. And it's like, she thought she knew this industry, but it's one of those things where it's like, if you know this industry, then you would have been somewhere by mm. now, like after all these years. And I don't want to be a failed artist. Like, you know, like, majority of your music teachers were just these failed artists <laughs> oh but they know about that. the industry like <laughs> but you know what i mean like some of your music it was just like them sound bitter no but it's true <laughs> like not all of them but i yeah, mean yeah. like the ones that i saw i was just thinking yeah you know about this industry but where are you like mm. you're in a classroom teaching me like literally i know that sounds so harsh yeah but it's like some people really think they know it and they don't mm. they really don't and also for example, like say if my grandma came to me and she started telling me about the industry, I would say to her, listen, compared to when you was younger and when I'm like my age now, I know what's popping. I know what people want to see, mm. like sex sells, you understand? Crap, so I know what people want to see. I know if like how people want to promote and stuff like this. I know about social media, TikTok. I know how it all works. She doesn't. Mm. So it was kind of like that clash as well. And, um, yeah, it was hard. Like, I remember um, I, I went to the studio with this girl and she was talking about, oh, let's do like blah, blah in the song in Jamaica, Jamaica. And you can't really do that because it's just going to come across forcing. Mm. And it's even if like this is not a very, very danceful song. This song is Bad B Vibes. Mm. Don't mess with me because mm. I got my shit together. And she said she better than me, but she not better than we. You understand? Mm. So it was like, it was more like that. It wasn't like a, yeah, da -da -da -da. like, nah. <laughs> oh, it's just hard sometimes. Would well, you think UK Soka could be actually number one in the UK then? Um, I don't think Soka is number one right now. I'll say it's still more Afrobeats, but I think it could, like, 100%. Like, I've seen so many Soka artists recently as well. Um, like Simbali. Uh, mm. So yeah, definitely. Like, I think it can it can get there. I think it just depends on the time time of year as well. It's like certain music pops more in the summer than the winter, mm. and it just depends. So, yeah. so, for, so you got Christmas song coming on then? Christmas song? <laughs> no, like honestly, my I'm just gonna focus on finding the different sounds, finding out what I really want to do, like within music. And mm. I want people to hear not just one song, like loads of different songs. Like I've been around some big artists mm. um, and you know, they've been like, Tia, like I've got, I've got like 50 songs on my phone that I've recorded. And I'm thinking, I haven't even done that. I don't have 50 songs on my phone like mm. that I've recorded. I don't, I've only got like little clips of some stuff that I've done or cause I haven't been so committed to music as I should be. Like some people I'm thinking like, I don't know, I'm not trying to hate on other artists, but I'm just thinking I should be doing what you're doing because I have tripled the talent. Not like that. No, talk but about you it. know what I mean? No, no, because I'm again, thinking, yeah. No, I'm not, because again, there's a lot of artists that's made it. I think, mm. bro, but you're, how have you made it? Yeah. I'm like, um, so I'll say it right now. I think H is like that. Mm. Artie's like that. Avelino's like that. Mm. Oh, I had AJ Tracy there, mm. but it started to rub off of me. Like, AJ, but I rate the work rate AJ Tracy in it. But. And it, it's just more frustrating because obviously, like when I was younger, I done this opera. Mm. I done I 
I like can read no notes like it's another language. Like I can do all this piano stuff. I have such like music intelligence within like actual like writing and everything like that. It's just hard because when you get into the industry, that's not what it's like. You should People go on the are, voice. I think you should go on the voice. Everyone said I. Sh all the my voice, friends said I should go on that. Yeah. The voice. Not forget, Britain's Got Talent or the rubbish. Nah, the nah, voice. The voice. Yeah. yeah. Cause the reason I like the voice, it doesn't judge you, but how you look. Yeah. At first. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like about the voice, isn't it? I I'll see. I'll consider that as well. I say we still do the dating shows just to get out of the way. <laughs> you know, we might do the voice. And, uh -huh. But um, yeah, like honestly, it's just about finding my sound and like people know what I'm capable of. You know, that are close to me. But I think I really need to show it. Like I have some stuff from when I was 16. I was doing some mad mm. notes, like mad high notes. I remember um, one time the uh, the engineer was sitting down and I said to him. That's the first time I've done a high note in a in a studio. And I said to him, I'm going to do a high note. And he was like, whoa, wait, you're going to do a high note? Like, mm -hmm. is your voice going to cut? Like, I said, no, 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 no. Like, I'm, I'm actually trained in this. Like, I can do this. Let me just. And he said, cool. And I have, like, an unedited um, high note thing in my phone. But every single time I hear that, I'm just like, wow. Like, I can I can reach any note like it's, it's just it's crazy and that's what i want people to see i want people to see real music mm. i want people to see like real vocal training like real like things that you don't even think can come from a human's voice like like mariah carey it's just crazy can you tell the difference if someone's like mimicking or faking it then in terms of the music what do you mean As like not really. I, I don't think I can. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really think I can. I just think that sometimes people sort of follow the trends of how to sing or okay. like there's so many like, I don't know. I like Georgia Smith. She's good. I know that there's... The reason I rate her because she had to go to America. Mm. That's why a UK wasn't appreciating her. So she went to America. And Literally. That's why I rate her. And that's like LMA as well. Big facts. Because when I first heard LMA, I thought she was from... America mm. like I didn't realize till yeah, up in it. yeah yeah literally I was like what like she probably sounds American and um now she's doing her thing so well, that's yeah. what's lacking in UK R&B I still I remember I still went to America Marsha and Bruce went to America as well I think it's a thing where like it's slowly becoming more appreciated things so in the UK yeah but I think yeah. people just need to push more mm. Mm. I think like drills more sort of out there than everything else. Well, like, sells it. Mm. Well, it's always sells though, isn't it? Yeah, but also there's a there's a girl called um is it Minelia? I, I can't remember, but she tried to do like a Yeah, she's hard. Yeah, she's, she's hard. proper sick. She's like hard. but then it sort of she had that song. That and, sample. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, say yeah. yeah. You got a fella that you wanna say yeah. No, I mean that one. Oh, love. the sample went dun, 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 dun. But that's what I mean, after that the song sample, yeah. I never heard any of her other songs okay. and I never heard about her. So it's like that needs to be pushed on more. Do you know what I mean? I just I just wish that she done more of her R and B songs and stuff like that. I don't know. Mm. But when I heard that song, I was like, "What? <laughs> like this is a girl from London? Like it's mad." So yeah. You drive, yeah. I just mm. know. What's your opinion on these climate protesters? Oh my days! About I think about two weeks ago, I was in Oxford Street and I saw them all on the floor. <laughs> like, here, here. And I was just like, "Let me just get through." Like you know what it is. You, okay, cool. You live in a house with five people, right? Mm. Everyone, you know, cooks, cleans, whatever, whatever. Da, 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 da. Everyone eats there. But at the end of the day, like, the house can't be clean if you're not all putting in the work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you're not going to put in the work, the house is just going to stay as it is. So it's like the fact that people are trying to stop, you know, driving, climate change, stuff like this. It's not going to work unless everyone does it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I just think that there's just no point. I mean, do what you can. I just want to know, if I get out and slap one of them, do I go jail? Uh, yes. <laughs> you won't go jail, but that's an assault. Because that would stress me out. Like, bro, you've got work. You need to clock literally, in for work yet. You've got this guy. Put, like, bro, what like, like, my person do that rubbish? Don't do something. And then they got their drums like... Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> I was enjoying it, though. I was like, hey, let me add a little... Like, I was hey. enjoying it, but at the same time, I was just like... It's not going to change anything, but mm. I guess it makes people more aware and that's the main thing. That's just a message and like you just will learn to just recycle, man. <laughs> so yeah. miss, where's the party for this weekend? Where are we going? This weekend, mm. I am going, where am I going? Saturday is my sister's uh, birthday. She's going to be three or four, I think. 
um, for my dad's side. So I'm going to go with them, trampoline them. It's going to mm. be fun. And on Sunday is my auntie's wedding. Mm. So um, I'm just going to go there and enjoy it. I'm going to drive. But next week, I'm, okay. I'm looking to go out. Obviously, week after, I'm probably going to be in Paris. Um, when I come back, I'm going to go to my Latin clubs and enjoy that. And yeah. So in, the, in the club, what kind of girl are you doing? <laughs> Listen, I'm on the dance floor. I'm the one that's broken her back, like, literally. Is it, yeah? I'm the one getting in, like, I'm like, come on, guys, don't be shy. And then the guys are like, hey. And I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm the one that gets involved. I'm not shy at all. Okay. You just got to live the moment. It goes so quick, like, a few hours. Like, it goes so quick. So just enjoy it. Yeah. So you hate the girls that just go to the club and just stand around? Yeah, and just stand around. That gets me vexed. It's like we came here so that the next day our back can hurt. Like, literally, like, <laughs> we came here so that the next day we can be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we've done that. Like, it's just about mm. having fun. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, definitely definitely the loud one. Or, like, I'm the I'm the person that's like, hey, like, if my friend doesn't want to dance, I'm like, don't touch my friend. Like, I'm the loud Is girl. Is it you, yeah? yeah I'm like, or I'm like, you're so pretty. Like, I'm just one of those guys. Okay. <laughs> so you're trying to read already. Yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. Like, especially when I'm drunk, like, oh my God, no. So what's your favorite film, then? Favorite film? Strangely, I love Bollywood. Seriously? Yeah, I love Bollywood because I love, love films. So, yeah, Bollywood has also been a big part of my life like regarding like singing the songs mm. I, I love it like i love the asian f like fashion culture like indian culture yeah i just love it and it's always about love triangles and someone dies and all this crap i don't know i just find it fun so yeah i mainly watch that um i tried the nollywood thing but <laughs> i'm thinking it's so fake like especially like the the versions of like uh superman or something yes. and i'm just like what yes. the hell like I literally, like, the oh. green screen is not even matching up. Like, it actually gives me... I remember I watched this funny uh, Nollywood film. It was, um, uh, what was it? Elevator Baby, right? I don't even know if you heard this. It's on Netflix, yeah? And the lady, she has a baby in the elevator. And it's just so fake. Like, imagine, like, they're reacting to the lift, like, moving or something. And then they're just like... Uh, uh, uh. And then the light just flashed like lightning. Like, how did lightning get in the elevator? That doesn't make any sense. Like, it gets me so hot. I remember I watched this one. It was about um, uh, uh, this this woman that fell in love with a white man, right? Or oh, Nollywood. Yeah, Nollywood. She fell in love with a white man, and the family wasn't accepting him. And um, that was quite interesting to watch, but it was so funny. Like, they were just like, they was like, we brought you up to love your own like and then she was just like but mommy i love him like it was just funny like it was a, and then she and then when she said that it, the mom was just like eh did you hear what she said and then then the, 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 she'll be like they'll be like to the dad did you hear what she said take your daughter please or something like that like or we need to pray or something oh just these nollywood films i can't hack them like they just remind me of like my aunties and it just it just makes me die like literally so what you'd have gone like big brother nigeria then no, that would be mad. Like, I'll tell you one thing, yeah. One time I was getting my hair done in, um, in, uh, I can't remember how long ago, but I was getting my hair done in some salon anyway. Mm -hmm. And it was a Nigerian lady. And, um, like, she, she was quite surprised. Like, sometimes, you know, when people see me, they're, like, not sure where she's from, in it, because of my hair and everything. Mm -hmm. um, this is, like, my natural hair. And she was like, oh, you're mixed, like, you're mixed. I was like, yeah, it must be winter time, because I look a bit lighter in winter. But I thought, yeah, like, mm. I'm mixed. And um, she was telling me how, um, she was like, asking me about my type. I was like, you know, I usually go for brown skin guys, mm. like, like, just more of my culture, stuff like that, just because I want someone to relate to. Mm. And um, she was like, please. She's like, I need to call my daughter. I need to call my daughter. I was like, why? Like, she was Nigerian. It was, it was, I was laughing. I was like, why do you need to call your daughter? She said, because she wants to marry the white man. <laughs> and I told her, I told her that I don't want her to marry the white man. So she wanted me to convince her daughter to not marry a white man. And I was just laughing. And she was like, she was like, even you, you know, like you're light skin, <laughs> but you know, you know, to marry within your culture. And then I was just laughing. And when I was telling her, like, you know, like my type and everything, she was like, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's how it's supposed to be. And I was just <laughs> laughing. Like, I was just laughing so hard. And that's when I just, you feel like such an acceptance when you're in that mm. sort of um, environment. And plus, like, when I walked through the door, like, she honestly was so surprised. Like, even 
you know, when I was singing certain certain church songs to her, like I was like, glory be to God in the highest or like everything, a double, double. Like she was like, how do you know this? Like, like I wasn't supposed to know it, mm. or like, I'm looking for my journey. Like she was <laughs> like, like for literally, my journey. like when she heard that, she was just shocked. <laughs> hey, like That's my song. Yeah, literally. So, you know. Be yeah. real, Mitch, have you ever liked two guys at the same time before? Have I ever liked two guys at the same time? Um, I don't think I've ever been in that situation. I think I've just been in a situation where I've gone, all right, cool, like, you know, like rebounds. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm. like, or like I've had backup, but mm. not really liked guys at the same time. I just feel like I can't give my all to one person and not just another person. And if I feel like I'm actually talking to someone like on a solid thing, then I will actually be very loyal, like automatically, mm. even if it's not even a relationship, like, I just, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. Mm. Yeah. Can you tell if guy just wants one thing then? Um, yeah, I think so. Like, I feel like I've got more clever with that, with experience. Like, I just feel like I've, every single time it's strange because every single time I talk to a guy, mm. I just be honest with them. I say, hey, like, are you just here for sex? Or do you actually want to get to know me? And I can decide whether I want to do that or not. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And they'll say, hey, Tia, like, maybe you know i'm just here for this or oh no no i'm actually looking for something i'm like listen you can tell me like I, it's my decision for what i want to do and mm. that's it and that's the way no one gets hurt and there's no miscommunication and so, also yeah. can you tell the difference between like a south guy a north guy east guy west guy yeah actually that's really strange because i remember when i first started talking to west guys i always <laughs> felt like they was like one year below me or something like one age below me or a bit younger or they acted a bit younger and i just mm -hmm. feel like east guys oh they're cheeky i don't really know about <laughs> south, south guys that much but all i know is that east guys like there's so many cheaters out there like oh cheaters yeah oh, cheaters. Che cheeky no, okay they're, they're, you know they're cheeky as well okay but i think East London Defo are repping for the most good looking boys, I think. Um, North London, I haven't really spoken to too many there, but I don't really think I'd want to speak to somebody from North London just because it's so close to home. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. I remember when I was younger and I used to go through Wood Green and I swear to you, I've got- well, By like, the cinema? Listen, by the cinema or just <laughs> yes. anywhere. I'm telling you, like my grandma mm. had uh, 10 girls and three boys, right? So I've got like 10 plus aunties, but mm. that's just like the blood one. So there's half, half, half. But I swear to you, every single time I went to Wood Green with a guy or just by myself, I would see an auntie. And that's just one thing I just can't deal with, like, at all. Like, oh, who's this? Oh, he's just my, um, what do you, yeah, situationship. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just a bit long. So yeah. what's the put-off for you then, in terms of guys then? Put-off for me is someone that's just, like, I don't know. I say someone that's too, like, cocky, like, in a way that mm. they're like, oh, I know she's never going to leave, or, like, I don't know, like, just guys with big egos. I say, like, I was talking to this footballer and he just thought, like, say if he would say, all right, end the call then, or I'm going to end the call, bye. And it's sort of like, well, you think I'm going to chase you? Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, those guys that just, they know that they're the shit, so they want you to sort of be after them. I don't like that. I like humble guys. I like guys that are, like, love family and love traveling and creative, stuff like that. I don't really like guys that are up there so far. Cool. You said you're going to Paris. What, what country do you want to go next then? Okay, so after Paris, um, I don't know, like, I have a guy best friend. He was saying how he wanted to do a group trip to Portugal. Mm. Um, maybe something like that. I'm going to do uh, Europe for sure. And then in two years, I think I'm going to Jamaica with my family. So Okay, yeah, that's yeah. the turn up. Um, that's the turn up. I said to my mum, <laughs> I'm going for a month. Like, uh, I'm going to fully enjoy it. Are you going to come back? Uh, uh, what? Are you going to come back? If someone went to me and say, Browning, come here. Nah, listen, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. But, um, you know, it, I just, I really want to go there. I've been wanting to go there for years. Mm. Like, we we have family out there. and I don't think yeah. I'll come back. Yeah, no. If I went there, I think Jamaican girls are my weakness. That's my kryptonite. Really? That's my kryptonite. Oh, my I'm, God. I'm 32, so I know myself now. That's yeah, my kryptonite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your, like, that's, woo. That's my kryptonite, yeah. No, it's, it's hard. But I think that... 
it's good when you go to another country and you're there for a bit, then you come back and you're left inspired and it's like, mm. hey, now I'm gonna do my stuff, now I'm gonna Big do facts. this. Like, especially out there, like, it's so hard. Mm. It's so hard out there. Even like, when people complain about the UK and complain about England, we have it so lucky. Even people jail. don't even understand. Even jail. even jail, they have it lucky. Big they, even, they got their PlayStation and Some people in jail live better than people outside. That's what I'm saying, mm. like, even, that's why I was saying about getting money. Like, I don't think in the UK you can be broke because there's jobs. EMA, there's GSS, literally, there's GSA. eBay. Like, I remember, yeah, for this music video, I'm telling you right now, yeah, I looked in my room and I said, anything that needs to go is going. Like, <laughs> I'm not asking my mom for money. Mm. I'm not doing that. Like, I'm telling you right now, I spent over 1000 for this video. Like, Have you had, like, a broke day before? A what? A broke day. Like, you've been stone broke the whole day. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> I was asking, curious, just curious. And do you know what it is? Like, I have my dad's personality where it's like, I'm a hustler. If I ain't going to get the money from here, I'm getting it from there. Mm. And if it's not getting it from there, I'm getting it from there. And there's just different ways that I make money that's more private to me. But it's like, I know I will never go broke. Like, Your only fans? No, no, no. Oh, okay, no, I'm, just, no, 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 no. I'm just asking. I just have to ask. Not only it. fans. I'm just asking. Oh, hell no. no nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it's it. Not, no, nothing's wrong with it. Like, I know a lot of girls that do it. Mm. Um, me no i don't think i would do that just because i feel like my body is just so easy to recognize <laughs> um i'm not gonna lie like uh, i just i used to do modeling in the past okay. um i've been asked to do only fans um there's different things i've been asked to do i've, I've been asked to do escorting like hey big big shit like literally and they've literally been like we'll pay you this much and i'm talking big money and mm. that's just not in my heart because it all comes back Mm. It all comes back. But there's other ways to make money. You just have to be clever by it and low key and yeah. I just know, what's your advice to the girls that are coming up then, isn't it? Like up and coming artists, like females coming up. What's your advice would you give to them? What advice I would give to them? Don't worry about any other girls. Mm. They're just hating. Carry on doing your thing. And at the end of the day, once you find your your spark, your confidence, keep at it. Because it's so hard. I've been to events where there's there's been like six singers, um, like six of them, female singers, they all do R and B the same thing and you sort of watch one after the other and you're just like, Oh, it's I'm cool. going on next, I'm mm. not too sure. But just own it. Just own it is what I'd say for sure. What's your stance on surgery? Oh, so like BBLs? Any. Okay, so to be honest, I've had my lips done six times. Six? Yeah. Why six? Um I, okay, this is funny. So when I turned 18, um, my, I said to my mom, like, you know, I'm 18, I can get, I can get, now I'm 19, by the way. But I was like to my mom, now I can get a tattoo and I can do anything I want. Mm. Da, 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 da. And she was like, okay, like, what do you want to do? Because you're not getting a tattoo. <laughs> so I just said, oh, my lips. And she was like, why? And I was like, I don't know. I just want to do it. Like, and plus you can take it out. Like it's not a thing where mm. it's just stuck. So she was like, cool. So then I done it and then I've done it again and I got addicted and I just liked the feeling and it just made me feel so confident and so much more full and it was just suiting my face. And I don't know. I just kind of got obsessed with it. And then, um, I stopped it for about a year because I thought, nah, this girl's taking too much of my money. Like, listen, I, <laughs> I can't be spending this shit anymore. Mm. Like, I, I, I need to stop it. So, um, yeah, I just feel like BBL, that's a big thing. That's your body. Mm. That's affecting the way that you might have kids that can lead to death. There's so many things. I would not do it. If I had the money, I would not do it at all. Being a woman, are you scared to have like daughters growing up then? No, I think my daughters would be bosses like oh, me. I think because it's strange because my brother has my mum's personality and I have my dad's. Mm. Like, I'm strong, I'm independent, I'm a hustler, and that's how my, I feel like my kids are going to be. And they're never going to feel insecure. I don't feel insecure about my lips. I just wanted to do it because I knew I had the money and I turned 18 and I was like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm going to do my lips. Like, it was never insecurity for me. Mm. It was more so just, I want to do it. And I could take it out if I want. Mm. And yeah, that's it really. As you know, this show is called Tipsy Talk. So again, Miss, we're going to need a drunk story from you. Drunk? Well, yesterday was a drunk story. I'll tell you that. Um, so yeah, so obviously yesterday, 
Um, I got to the restaurant now. And um, when I'm, so it was four, four of us. And so only one of the girls was there. So I was like, you know what? I've had a hard week. Mm. I'm just going to drink. I'm not driving. So I said to the, the waiter, I said, hey, hey <laughs> where's the menu? Mm. And he was like, here's the menu. What do you want? All right. I want three shots of tequila mm. and I want a four star martini. And you can add a little cherry on there if you want. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but obviously, I was just like, yeah. Started off drinking. I hadn't eaten for, I think, a day because I was just feeling crap. Okay. So I was just going heavy, drinking, mm. not even eating anything. So by the time the two girls arrive now, I'm gone. I'm saying I'm looking all this back. <laughs> hey, like, I'm done. Like So then, um, so then what happened is he came back and then I said to him, like, two more shots and another martini. So he brought it and then that's when he started bringing the water as a joke. Like he was bringing me shots of water as a joke. And I was like, no, like bring me that tequila. And then I ended up having three more shots of tequila. Yeah, the, uh, another martini. And then um, I said to my friend, I, was, I said to her, you need to take me to the toilet because I'm going to wet myself here in this mm -hmm. nice English, English restaurant. Like you better take me downstairs <laughs> quick. I'm wearing heels, I'm all falling over. Mm. I'm having these guys talk to me as I'm going down the stairs. To go to the store. I'm like, hi, are you okay? Yeah, we're enjoying the night. Like, I was gone. Anyway, I go to the bathroom now. Oh my gosh. I never pulled down my child so quick. Like, I had to, I was gonna wet myself. Like, so my friend, she, she pushed me in the toilet and she was like, sit, sit, sit. And I just went to the toilet quick. And, I couldn't even pull up my trousers. Like it was mad. Going upstairs was mad. And then when we, when we was in the place, I was still shouting and saying, "Bring the shot! Bring the shot!" And I was going louder. And I was like, "I was like, why are you looking at me? Are you looking at me? Why?" Like it was oh, but it was so embarrassing. We. Oui. And then um, we went out, and then I had my sliders in my bag, mm -hmm. so I just put on my sliders with my bare feet, and, um, and then yeah, I just strolled the way home. And then I was talking to a boss man in the taxi. <laughs> I, was say, I was like, where are you from? And obviously I love Bollywood. And so he was like, I'm Indian. I said, like, swear, do you know this song? Like, gotcha, gotcha, hot day. Like, do you know all this stuff? And he was like, yeah. And then we was talking about relationships. And he said, I'm too young to get married. And mm, no, I was crazy. Very young, miss. Literally. Huh? I'm scared of marriage, man. No, no. Scared of marriage. I'm very scared. You know what it is? This generation is so hard to find people that are generally wanting to be committed and wanting to have something real. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I understand that. And the thing is, is that you can be with someone for five years and not go anywhere, or you can meet someone in a year and end up, you know, having kids and stuff like this. So it's, you should really shouldn't like limit yourself for sure. Like me, like me again, I'm 32 years old. So it's like, I'm trying to find someone that likes me for who I am in it, not for mm. the status in it, kind of things. Yeah. Isn't it? So, but it's a different car because I do radio in it, and obviously I interview females all the time, so they get a bit insecure. Oh, you meet all these females all the time, you must get so. Mm -hmm. There's no even like that. This is business, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but at the end of the day, like you, when you find somebody, they've met you like that. They've met you mm. as, oh, you do these interviews, and they have to accept that because that's not going to change because that's who you are, and you will find somebody that is going to accept that and is going to say, hey, babe, listen, I trust you because this is this is what you do, and you can even you know say. You know, you should come one time. You should see how it all works. Mm. Like, it's not all bad. That's just insecurity with females because we're thinking, oh no, what if he's going to do this? But he's been doing this. And if he wanted to talk to them girls, he would. I just you don't know think know my mean? girl's in England. I just don't think so. That's why I think I need to go to Jamaica now. Yeah. I don't think I'll come back though, but I think she's in Jamaica. I don't go to Jamaica. <laughs> go look for the, look for the thing. <laughs> I'll just drink my red strap. Literally, yeah, just, walk around. just go in there. <laughs> Going there with your with your tight tight um your tight tight jeans like those typical like no, 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 and your that. Boot, oh, yeah <laughs> your clocks and then just walk through and just look like honestly it's it's hard it's really hard in this generation like mm. people I feel like because of social media people have just become amazing actors like I don't Pretend know what like, it yeah, is yeah, like facts. Matrix, pretending huh? is like and it's mad. Like it's literally real. Like the mm. manipulation. Everyone's is a celebrity on Instagram. Everyone is a, a celebrity. celebrity. Everyone is this other person. Everyone's a Gemini. Big facts. It, yeah, it's yeah. basically where the way to put it. And it's just hard. Like that's why I feel like if you're not in faith, I just don't think 
Mm. You can sort of make it like, you know, even with certain situations in my life. And I've just said, God, just show me. Just like, don't make me blind. And that's how I've sort of made it through. Like a lot of people, they just sort of say, you know what, our generation's messed up anyway. Let me just be with this person because of this, this and that. No, at the end, it gets ugly. Do you know what I mean? People so. might look at you, see all smiles and roses. But I just want to, have you ever gone through like a dark stage before? Definitely. Like um, last year with my ex, this is going to be like a mad joke, yeah, but I, I don't know why. Anyway, so I was trying to pass my theory, oh, my driving yeah. theory. It took me eight times to pass. Eight? And I'll tell you this now. Eight? I know, it's ridiculous. I speak eight. English, I write English. I don't know why I couldn't pass. Eight. But here, this is my testimony, right? So when I was with my ex, like, I was trying to pass my theory, but I swear down, like, I was saying, God, please, like, please take me to the next level. I need to drive. Like, I need to, I need to drive. Like, where I live, there's no buses, like, literally. Okay. Like, and um, God was saying, you have to let go. You have to let go. I was so depressed. Like, I was like, why, why, why is, does this boy keep cheating on me? Why does this boy keep doing this? Why, like, what, what, why am I not good enough? Like, mm. why am I... Like, basically, he was an artist as well, so I was mad insecure. Wait, is he still doing music now? Yeah. Is he blown? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, but obviously, like, he had girls in his video, and because... The thing is, yeah, is that's not that deep. But when you're doing it off camera as well, it's like, are you... Do you know what I mean? How do you catch him? <sighs> Listen, this Sherlock Holmes <laughs> is sick. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one thing. If I don't do the music thing, I'm definitely being a detective. But that's another story. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is when I broke up with him, I passed my theory straight. Mm. And then um, I remember like, I just felt like, what? Like, it was just because of him. Like I literally passed a week after. And then I just then leveled up. Like that. Yeah, for sure. I used to say to him all the time, I used to say, I rebuke your spirit. Whenever we used to argue, I would shout, I rebuke from? your spirit. Huh? What country is he from? Oh my God, it's going to bait him. He's, let's just say he's African, isn't it? But I don't want to say where, because that's going to be so bait. How? Gambian? No, stop guessing, <laughs> stop guessing. Oh, I'm joking, carry just, on. Just no good, yeah. isn't it? Um, but yeah, like at the end of the day, like things will hold us back. Mm. And... We, we can't force things anymore. Like, that's one thing I've learned. You can't force anything. Life is too short, mm, way too short. People short. can pass away like that, any age, anything. Like, think about it, even with this COVID thing and the pandemic, like, there's so many people that I know that's passed away. Like, my uh, one of my pastors passed away. Sorry like, literally, like, it's just so crazy. And when, like I was saying about my stepdad, when you go through experiences so close to home, it really humbles you. Mm. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So any shows, anything lined up for in the year? Yes, yeah, like so i done a few shows this year. i done one at Tow Yard, mm. which is in King's Cross. And i done one in, um, oh, what's it called? Oh, it was in um, Shoreditch, Bo Box, Box Park. Park. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my place, yeah, yeah. Man. That's love, it. Yeah, that's my place, Literally. man. I performed there. I performed um, all my songs. And um, that's the first time I'd performed in a few months. And I think I just really want to get more involved in shows, interacting with people, being more confident on stage. You know, I'm confident as a person, but I just want to be more confident in performing. Mm. It's completely different. Um, so I just want to gain more experience with that as well. So, yeah, I don't have anything really lined up this year. But I guess if I find some open mic stuff, I might try to do that. And mm. yeah, just waiting on it. Well, we've got 10 minutes left. Anything we get for the chest, let the people know anything? that wait on me because i got some stuff coming and it's gonna be lit and it's really just gonna be about me my journey it's gonna be relatable to everybody black white blue <laughs> <laughs> any age um and it's just gonna be more of the real me and not this girl that's trying to be like everyone else so yeah i can't mm. wait it's gonna We're be getting lit social before we leave isn't it social media oh social, social media yeah. so my instagram snapchat tiktok Everything is Tia Maria Shanti. Um, so check it out, everybody, and just enjoy. And don't worry, the music's gonna be on my socials and everything soon. I'm just trying my best. I'm gonna be working with TikTok a mm. lot as well, doing some covers, some fun covers, some gospel stuff. So yeah. Gospel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but tipsy talk, wavy Wednesday, champagne and conversation, bank before bed. Here we go. Jeez. Right, um, we've called you in.
brilliant to discuss Tia's grades, which have dropped dramatically recently. She's been skipping class and been submitting her homework late, uh, if at all. I've made Tia aware that school is a fundamental part to her personal development and essential to her progress into adulthood. If she doesn't pull up her socks, she will be left behind the rest of the class and possibly the rest of the year. I do not accept this behaviour, Tia. The school will not accept it, and quite frankly, you do not have the time to mess around. Before you know it, school will be over and you'll be leaving. You have to focus on your work before you throw your life down the toilet. Tia, do you have anything to say about this? Matty on the buttons. Who's really responsible? Not me, not her, not him. It's a blur, why flirt? Like, what are we fighting for? Don't dish you, miss. Don't talk with the fist. Gotta hear the twist. Now I don't know how to solve this. What are we fighting for? Who is responsible? Cover the story, gotta stay in one lane, got you moving like Tory. Don't get me wrong, there's always two sides of the story. Forgetting every second, reminding me of Tory. Be responsible for the actions. Don't half the story, make it a fraction. You can't ever hold me for ransom. Hate is getting close, we got them moving like Van Der. You know I'm gonna make it. You said fame's my lane, I gotta take it. You said never fake it or shake it. Confidence so strong, you can never break it. Like, why do girls gotta compete? The realest, only defeat. Gotta jump up and get on their feet. Like me, I'm changed, I'm looking all really mean. responsible. Not me, not her, not him. It's a blur, why flirt? Like, what are we fighting for? Don't diss you, miss. Don't talk with the fist, gotta hear the twist. Now I don't know how to solve this. What are we fighting for? Who is responsible? Trying to threaten me with see this relationship and one I should have missed like I'm raising a clueless little kid but I know that I'm better than this because you got more size than a Gemini you can never be a friend of mine yeah I'm cool I'm looking fly but you messed up and I'm done with the lies forget it like boy bye don't told you you're not my guy you'll never see me on sight I'm not on this don't fight, I'm gone. Take a flight, take a flight, I'm gone. Take a flight, take a flight.